Oh, <laughs> Durr, I'm like, why am I not live yet? I forgot to add myself to the stream and I have forgot to adjust my lighting and this is really weird and kind of washed out. So, hmm, I think I'm supposed to add some kind of orange filter to my light so I don't look so white. Oh, well, it's winter. Happy winter, happy Friday. <sighs> Thank God, this is a glass of rosé that I'm shamelessly drinking at 2 p.m. here in Seattle. Don't judge me. I picked up a huge amount of cookbooks, yay, at my local library. And many of these I've had on hold for a very long time. You know, I can't stand this lighting, so I'm going to fix it really quick. The fun of live video. Woo! Don't really like what it's doing to me. And I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. That's better, okay. I definitely look washed out, okay. I picked up months ago, but of course with COVID, our library system isn't doesn't have all the cookbooks that we wish they would as quickly as we want them. And everyone else is cooking at home, so everyone else is checking out all the cookbooks very quickly. I wanted healthy cookbooks for the New Year's, like right now. This is Well Plated by Erin Clark. I'm gonna give you some sneak peek peeks the pictures, but you'll want to watch the full cookbook live video that I do. And while I'm looking for some good pictures to quickly show you without violating too many copyrights, ooh, look at the beginning of this. Yay! I would love to hear in the comments where you're watching from and what you're making for dinner tonight or if you're picking up takeout. Ooh, pretty. I have such a large stack of cookbooks here, I'm running into them when I'm trying to turn the pages and that's a good problem to have. Okay, and Happy New Year. Did you get any cookbooks for Christmas? I would love to hear about that in the comments. Nobody gifted me any cookbooks, but I'm an adult, so I don't really get presents from Santa anymore. I'm just going to buy myself one. In fact, I just ordered an interesting Mexican home cook cookbook to keep, so I don't have to wait for it at the library. Ooh, good morning, sunshine. That looks good. Pardon my autofocus on this camera. It's going to freak out. Ooh, fruit and honey scones. I wanted to ask, and I was going to do this on Facebook yesterday, but I forgot. If you were going to bake something to consume in the morning, I'm assuming it wouldn't be a homemade croissant because that's so much work, but correct me if I'm wrong. Would you cook or bake muffins, scones, or oatmeal cookies? What would you make? Or biscuits, if you were going to go to that much time and effort. I'm flipping through this gorgeous cookbook, and I'm getting hungry, even though I just had lunch. Yum. You know, I'm all about the photography. Ooh, healthy salad, like the kind I don't make here at my home. For those of you that just joined us, I'd love to hear where you're watching from, and if you got or gave any cookbooks for Christmas. This is a balsamic farro salad with edamame and cranberries from the Well-Plated Cookbook. Yay! All right. The next cookbook, Katie did a review of this on our blog. I have not seen it yet. She's doing way more writing than I am because she's faster and better at it. Hi, Wendy. Thanks for watching. Lemongrass and Lime, Southeast Asian Cooking at Home. Whoa, they start off with lemongrass colored pages. This is going to make me very hungry, and I hope my boyfriend is picking up Asian food tonight. Okay. Southeast Asian Pantry, condiments and basics, snacks and street food, cocktails and beverages. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which... Happy Friday. Woo. Salads, rice and noodle, curries, seafood, meats, and desserts. I'm going to try and find just a couple pictures to... Oh, well, I turned right to the drink page, of course. <laughs> That's called Mind on My Money with Green Chartreuse. And if you ever are curious, there's a wonderful article that I think was in the New York Times last month about the history of chartreuse and the monks that make it. It's fascinating. It makes me want to go buy it, but I don't like the taste of it because it tastes too much like licorice. Braised pork belly banh mi with fried egg. I really don't know how to adjust the color on this camera today with StreamYard. Sorry. Don't know what's going on. Just pretend I've been out in the snow playing and I'm completely white because of it. Grilled pork jowl with fried Brussels sprout salad. Now, I still enjoy looking through these cookbooks, but as a vegetarian, it could be kind of rough, and I didn't know there was such a thing as pork jowl. <laughs> I bet it's delicious to the people that like that kind of thing. This is called Yum Woon Sen, and it is bean thread salad. <laughs> and my camera is freaking out on the bamboo mat that the plate is sitting on. It doesn't quite know how to process that for you. <laughs> Let's look at one more before I move on. 
Stir fried cockles with chili jam and Thai basil. Does that look good? Hmm. Don't know. Okay. Oh, one more. Barbecue baby back ribs, but Thai style. So that was my overview of lemongrass and lime, and I'll be doing a fuller look at it on a Cookbook Divas video soon. Don't know how to pronounce this. Chi spaka? Spacha? Spaka. Well, it's obviously Italian, but it says it's a new approach to American cooking, so I could be wrong. It's by Nancy Silverton with Ryan Di Nicola and Carolyn Carreño. Let's check it out. I'm kind of frightened of the big knife on the cover. What is going on in Chispaca? Okay. Ooh, so far, gorgeous. This is one of the bigger cookbooks. I could barely carry it up the stairs. I was like, ah, what have I done? It's too heavy. Contents, uh, the Spaca Pantry, Chispaca Grilling Class. Was that a restaurant? I never look when I order these. I just get them from the library, worry about it later. There's a chapter called Spontini. That sounds fun. One called Insalate, Carne, Pesce, Contorni, and Dolci. Dolce is our favorite, right? Let me find some... Here's the knife that they're so fond of at the beginning. Since I don't eat meat, I've never had to pick up one of those knives. <laughs> oh! Grilled pork and veal meatballs with fresh ricotta and braised greens. It's very hard to photograph brown food. I think they did a pretty good job because that's kind of rough. Like, ooh, they can often look yucky. I'm going to skip ahead, find something else to show you. You're going to hear my dogs barking because UPS is here yet again. Fried whole branzino with pickled cherry peppers and charred scallions. And if my camera was not looking so pale, you would be able to see the beautiful colors in that. <gasps> Ooh, roasted cabbage with bagna cotta yogurt and crunchy grains. I wouldn't have thought to add grains to crunchy cabbage. Wow, that's pretty cool. Let's skip ahead to the dessert section. You know I want to. Those of us, those of you who just joined us, I'd love to hear where you're watching from in the comments. And what are you making for dinner tonight if you're cooking? I have a boyfriend bringing me Chinese food tonight so I don't have to cook. Yay! Probably vegetarian egg foo young, but it tastes really good. And I suspect that the gravy they put on it is not vegetarian and I don't want to ask. <laughs> Beautiful picture of a summer stone fruit and mixed berry filling pie type thingy. Nice. And let's do one more dessert just because I feel like it. Let's see if there's another good picture without... I'm trying to flip through this fast for you, but carefully. Oh, banana cream pie. Oh, yum. Mm -hmm. Now I'm hungry for pie. Ah! That was cheese spaca. I'll be doing a full cookbook look through as well as one of our reels. I don't know if you watch those on Instagram. And if you're here from Facebook, please follow us on Instagram too, where we do a lot more fun things than we can do on boring old Facebook. This is community salad recipes from Arthur Street Kitchen. I don't usually grab restaurant related books because I've never been to Arthur Street Kitchen. I don't know why it's a big deal, like what, what's going on? But I thought this would be a good cookbook for inspiration now that it's the new year and we're trying to eat healthier. I don't want to, but I will. Revised edition with new recipes and stories. Okay, community starts off with green salad page. Woo! Welcome to the roots. Everybody loves brassicas. Did I say that right? Brassicas? I don't know. The kingdom of fungi. Ooh, mushrooms. The goodness of cereals. Love legumes. Hello, nightshades. Meet the marrows. Mm. Gonna skip that one. And in the mood for Asian. Okay, I'm just gonna flip through this real quick and see. Okay, a picture of broccoli is not thrilling. It's nice food photography. Very modern, clean, kind of dark, moody. There's the chef. Ooh, do I see some beets? Pickled beetroot with pui lentils, baby spinach, and cheddar. Ooh, that's healthy. I'm seeing lots of pictures of people that I guess have come to the restaurant, so I don't really care about them. Sorry, don't know them. Char-grilled fennel and asparagus with pearl couscous and coriander oil. Okay, keep going, keep going. Ooh, roasted cauliflower with caper vinaigrette and lemon parsley pan grattato, whatever that is. Ooh, that looks really good. Uh, those of you that just joined us, please let us know what part of the country you're watching from or the world. I suspect you're Americans or Canadians, though. We'll finish up looking at peas and mint with quinoa, feta, and almonds. That looks super simple. Why do I never make it? Because I'm lazy. That was the community cookbook. Now, this next cookbook, dessert person. 
I've been in line forever. It is the number one talked about cookbook that everyone on the planet had on their best of 2020 list. Everyone's freaking out, losing their mind. I wish you could see the cover, but there's the library bar on it. So glad to have it. And I'm going to quick, this will be the first book that I do a cookbook look through of today so I can get it back to the library tomorrow because there's like 35 people on hold waiting for it. I don't want to be rude. So let's take a peek at Claire Saffitz's dessert person book and find out why everyone was so freaking out to get us. Ooh. So I opened up to a random page and I wish you could see the nice color. Thanks, camera light. Classic English muffins. Mm, boring. I hope everything else is more, you know. Oh, this, I love this. I love this. Step by step photos. I just screamed at my dogs. I <laughs> felt the need to bark. I love step-by-step -step photos. They encourage me to try a recipe because then I know I'm not screwing up. Although I'm not going to be that good at braiding it. I have to tell you that right now. Not to not have faith in myself, but I know myself pretty well. More step-by-step -step photos. Okay, this is cool. So here she's making a St. Louis gooey butter cake. Are there step-by-step -step photos for that? or just? Mm, let me see. No, because you don't need them. It's not that hard. But the walnut maple buns a little picture of how to roll them up so they come out right. I get it. This is a heavy, thick, busy cookbook. I will be doing a full cookbook look through of it later. She's making croissants. Oh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm actually not a dessert person. I am a savory appetite, or excuse me, appetizer person. If I had to choose at a restaurant between either getting an appetizer at the beginning of the meal or dessert later, I would go for the salty appetizer. So I'm glad to see some savory stuff in here like this crispy mushroom galette. Uh, now, don't get me wrong. I do like desserts too. Oh, here's all the savory stuff. Feta zatar flatbread with charred eggplant dip. So that's not all dessert related. I'm not sure why it's a dessert person book, but okay. French Epane, sweet tart dough. Let's go back to the desserts. Oh, this is very French. Goat cheesecake with honey and figs. Ah. Oh. We'll do a full, full look through very, very soon because I got to get this back to the library. Bye, Wendy. Eat well, be well. Plant-based, gluten-free, refined, sugar-free. I don't normally read a cookbook like this, but it's the new year. We need to eat healthier. It's by Jana Cristofano of Nutritionicity, whatever that is. It is a, these are all 2020 cookbooks, I think. Eat well, be well. The reason I like to give you some peeks at the inside of them is when you're on Amazon or Barnes and Noble, you can see a couple sample pictures and sometimes you can see the table of contents, but not often on a brand new book. Chapters, plant-based gluten-free kitchen, breakfast, soup, salads, dressings, toppers, breads and crackers, nibbles and snacks, appetizers and small plates, mains and big plates, desserts and indulgences. Okay, ooh, not a lot of pictures as I'm flipping through. Oh, that's just because we got to the first chapter with recipes, okay. Um, apple pie quinoa breakfast bowl. Um, I see some donuts. Don't want to know. They look really good. Pancakes. Starting off well. Let's keep going. Healthy, healthy. Mm, I'm seeing some treats. Seeing lots of treats. Nibbles and snacks. Good chapter. Candied pecans. Okay. So, so far as a healthy eating book, I've only seen desserts and <laughs> sweet stuff. Aha! Broccoli with olive and fig tapenade. It's something I wouldn't have thought to put together. <gasps> Beautiful roasted asparagus with avocado cream. Whoa, lemon garlic oven fries. Hello, you had me at fries. I will be looking through this cookbook very soon too while we're still in the mood to eat healthy. This is an older cookbook that I got because I love making hand pies. It's called Pocket Pies. It is teaches you how to make mini empanadas pasties, turnovers, and more, and I'm assuming in hand pies. And all of these are available in the Cookbook Divas shop, but I'll tell you a little secret. We don't ship them to you. It's an affiliate store. So if you're going to buy any of these cookbooks and you click a link, we get a tiny bit of money that helps us buy more cookbooks to show you. Poultry pies. Ooh. Butter chicken puffs. I would replace that chicken with my fake chicken, but you don't have to. You can have the real good thing. Chicken, bacon, and blue cheese jalousi? Did I say that right? That's interesting. Um, Cajun chicken and corn pies. Wow. Argentinian empanada. Now imagine you had some tequila, a margarita, or a beer with that. Yum. Or an albarino. Beef pies with polenta tops. That kind of looks like a shepherd's pie. Mexican beef and bean pie. I would make a lot of these right now. 
vegetarian. For me, meat for the boyfriend. Chorizo and potato galette with green olives. I gotta move my phone away from the speaker. It's freaking out. Excuse me. My phone. All right. That was pocket pies. Looks like it's full of savory, awesome stuff that I wouldn't necessarily make in summer, so I better make it in winter and spring. All right, you guys have been waiting for this. I finally got it. There was like 50 people ahead of me. I almost bought it from Barnes & Noble out of desperation. The Friends official cookbook. Raise your hand and drop me a note in the comments if you are a Friends fan. Let's take a look. October 2020 is when my library got it. Friends, the television series, the official cookbook. Oh, there they are. Who was your favorite? Mine was Phoebe because she's kind of like me, goofy and silly and tall. Hopefully you say pretty. Okay. Uh, let's see. This is Marcel's nutty, chocolatey, cakey French toast thing. Stuffed French toast. Marcel was a monkey, so I'm not sure what's happening there. Janice's oh my god pancakes. I know I don't sound like her. I can't be that obnoxious on purpose. Appetizers and snacks. Just for Joey fries board. <laughs> Love that. And he doesn't share his fries. I remember that. You know what they say about oysters. No comment. Keep going. Uh, shrimp ceviche in ponzu sauce. Not sure what episode. Oh, it comes from season one, episode 15, the one with the stone guy. Okay. Noodle soup comes from season five, episode 18, the one where Rachel smokes. I remember that one. Pickle green tomatoes, cherry couscous with brown butter. You get the drift. Ugly naked guy's sausage party. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> I'm not going to read this on camera. Okay. I'm going to laugh too hard. That is a huge stack of cookbooks. I think I deserve a little sip of this rosé wine. I am waiting to hear comments from our viewers. Where are you from? Which of these cookbooks have you been most intrigued by so far? Here is a book I'm going to give up and buy for myself because I love Ina Garten, the Barefoot Contessa. This is her modern comfort food book. The wait on the library was like four months long. I finally have it. Another one I have to quickly go through and return. And they know it's going to get used. This is the only book I picked up that has this nice library cover because they know people are going to be like, ah! Oh, it starts off with a tomato tart that I've seen her make on her show. I love it. Ooh. So it's a rainy day, and that would be awesome. Tomato and grilled cheese right now. Thank you for the comfort food. Oh, there she is. She's very good at what she does. I really got to say Whoever just joined us, hello. Drop me a note in the comments. Let me know where you're watching from. Contents of Modern Comfort Food by Ina Garten are cocktails. I love that she starts the book with that. Lunch, dinner, vegetables and sides, dessert. And then she ends with breakfast at the back, which I've never seen before. She started. Oh, that's really cool. Here's all of her cookbooks. I don't own any of them, but I'm going to buy this one because with the pandemic, I need comfort food. Let's be honest. <gasps> And of course, the photography is gorgeous, and I apologize that my lighting is so weird and cold looking right now. I blame Seattle's gray skies. I use a combination of natural light and a newer ring light. Oh, I see a pie. Okay. Ooh. Ingredients that she recommends to keep in your pantry. Skip ahead. Oh, spicy pimento cheese spread. How good does that look? One thing I don't like about her, although it could be endearing, is she always makes this little when she eats something. But... That's okay. I love her. Kielbasa with mustard dip. Creamy tomato bisque. Yes. What else? There's lots of beautiful pictures in this. Green salad vinaigrette. Uh, some tips on entertaining. Ultimate beef stew. I'm sad that I can't really entertain right now because of coronavirus. Let's get to the... Oh, Brussels sprouts pizza carbonara. Uh, I don't like Brussels sprouts on my pizza, but you could do it. There you go. Spaghetti spring green carbonara. I would eat that totally. Minus the bacon. Cheddar and scallion creamed corn. That is the first thing I would make out of this cookbook. Oh my gosh, love it. That was modern comfort food. I have a huge stack. Shall I keep going? I wish I'd gotten this before Christmas because I would have done a giant cookbook look through of it. Vegan holiday cookbook. Unfortunately, I just today got it in January because so many people had it on hold, and I think the entire Seattle library system had one copy. So, vegan holiday cookbook, plant-based meals and desserts for the Thanksgiving and Christmas table. Well, now we'll have it for next year. 75 veganized recipes for family and friends. Now, I'm not a vegan. I will add milk, cream, and butter to these recipes if I need to, and sour cream. 
But for the vegans, let's take a look. Starting off good with a nice picture. Um, roast sweet potato salad, very Thanksgiving y. Braised red cabbage. I'm not really a fan, but if you made it for me, I would politely eat it and not throw up at the table. Ooh, spicy vegan ramen noodles. Yum. Oh, look, the cookbook is color coded so you can get to the right chapter depending on the end. I love that. Warm lemon artichoke dip. Okay. What makes it creamy though? Is it going to be a bunch of ground up almonds? Artichokes, lemon zest, lemon juice, olive oil, salt, black pepper, paprika, soy milk, mm -hmm. and nutritional yeast. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> okay. Leftover toasties. I'm just not a fan of nutritional yeast. Cob loaf spinach dip. That is an incredible color. That looks really good. Um, the most epic vegan rocky road. Oil-free, sugar-free blueberry and lemon muffins. How do you keep them moist? Um, applesauce. Oh, of course, of course. And roast tomatoes, vegan style. And a pecan coconut caramel pie. Yum. Very festive. Definitely festive. I think I will get this for my friend Kim, even though she's not watching my cookbook videos. Oh, fine. Okay. Here is another cookbook. Oh my gosh, that has been on everyone's best of 2020 list. I could barely get my hands on it. I almost had to break down and buy it. And while I'm happy to own lots of cookbooks, there's only so much money in my bank account and only so much room on the bookshelf. And so I didn't buy it, but I might have to once I do an official look through of this. It's by Mira Soda, the author of Made in India. This is 120 vegan and vegetarian recipes from Bangalore to Beijing. Take a look and see what is in store for us. Oh, cute. I love the way they presented the chapters all colorfully like this. Snacks and small things, salads, noodles, curries, rice, tofu, flour and eggs, legumes, sides, condiments, sweet and helpful things. <gasps> oh, eggplant. Uh, apologize again for my light making this look so weird. I'm going to add some color to it later. A little filter. Eggplant larb with sticky rice and a shallot and peanut salad. Beet and yogurt rice. Yum. I never thought of making that. Tempeh with bok choy and tomato sambal. Did I say that right? Spring vegetable bun cha. Sini sambal buns. Wow. Oh, oh, okay. Vietnamese coconut pancakes is something I've never tried and it looks incredible. And I don't even care for coconut. This is amazing. Okay. I see why everyone likes this book. Just judging by the picture, which is very shallow. Tomato, pistachio, and saffron tart. Whoa, that looks so good. Okay, that looks awesome. Legumes. Bunny chow. Cute. Pomegranate, broccolini, Sichuan eggplant. Yum. Probably too spicy for my wimpy self. Wait, wait, wait. Tandoori broccoli. Hello, come to mama. I can already tell, and I haven't done official cookbook look through yet. I'm going to have to buy this. That's crazy. Okay. Wow. You should see the stack of cookbooks I have sitting on my floor right now. We still have about six to go through, and then I will end this live chat, but I would love to have some people join me in chatting. This is the new homemade kitchen. I Excuse the gloss. I know nothing about this cookbook. It is from the library. It is heavy and crazy. It says 250 recipes and ideas for reinventing the art of preserving, canning, fermenting, dehydrating, and more. Okay, it's from 2020. It is huge. I'll do an official look through later. Of course, there's a section on the pantry. Okay, here's the contents. Department of Caffeine. I love that they started their book with that. Department of Pickles and Preserves. Department of Dairy. Department of Grains. Department of Meat and Fish. Department of Spirits. Hello. Department of Fermentation. And the Department of Dehydration. Dehydration is what happens to me after I drink the caffeine and the spirits, but okay. Let's check out some of the pictures. Uh-oh. There weren't a lot of pictures, and I'm flipping through a lot right now. Oh, uh, mm, I need some pictures. Oh, okay, there's a picture. Brew Cabulary. Ha, ha, ha. Funny, but I need more pictures. Uh, there's not a lot. Okay. Department of Pickles and Preserves. So this is more of an educational cookbook with lots of reading. Information on water bath canning. I need pictures. How to thwart botulism. That's always a good plan. Oh, here's some pictures. Yay. Okay. 
Let's see how many more pictures there are in here. Okay, there are. Okay, there's some. Yeah, there's some pictures. Yeah. I'll do a reel later. You can see our reels on Instagram. So, ah, I need more pictures. I'm not a preserver or a canner or a fermenter or a dehydrator, and I should be. But I don't have that kind of energy right now. So those of you that like that kind of thing. All right. This, I suspect, is going to be one of my favorites to look through. This is Bake by Lorraine Pascal. Now, I did a quick little reel flip through on Amazon, or excuse me, on Instagram a couple days ago. This is back from February 2018. It's not brand new. But I wanted to grab it because look, that's just, that's just beautiful. That's oh. She writes about cookies and biscuits, brownies and tray bakes. And I don't usually call stuff tray bakes, so I'm wondering if she is British. Cupcakes, muffins and mini cakes, breads, pies and tarts, cakes, desserts and patisserie, specialist bakes, celebration and basics. This is going to be fun. Here's the author. She's very photogenic. Oh my gosh. We are trying to feature more cookbooks by uh, black authors, people of color, Asians, etc., 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 because all of our cookbook feed is by white people and that's not intentional. We love everything. So, cookies, <laughs> thumbprint cookies, yay. Meringue top cupcakes. Is there a picture of it? Oh, yes. I'm not a meringue fan, are you? It's too gooey. Kind of sticky, like meh. And what else can I show you? Boring, boring. Brown food's hard to photograph. That's boring. Whoa, what's that? Oh, it's jalapeno and pea cornbread. I love that because the peas would add more protein and the jalapeno would add some flavor. And here's a fresh fruit galette with matcha cream and basil. Matcha, I'm still learning how to like it. It tastes like grass, but it's supposed to. Oh, a berry meringue and honeycomb lemon tart. I wish you could see the actual color correctly. Thanks to my light, because it's very beautiful. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try and say this word after having half a glass of wine. A pisaladier. Pisaladier. That could be really funny. A courgette and lemon drizzle loaf with pistachio. See, that's something I would never think to make on my own, but a cookbook like this is, I'm like, yes, I love making loaf cakes. <gasps> Cranberry upside down cake with ginger. Something just fell out of the cookbook. Oh, thank God it wasn't a spider. Okay. Woo! On, on a live video. That's fun. Okay. Oh, beautiful. This is the last picture I'm going to show you from this book for now. A pistachio pavlova wreath with raspberries, lychees, and lime. That is gorgeous. Love it, love it, love it. Oh, that was big. We have just a couple more here before I give up since no one is chatting. Disney Eats. You know you were looking forward to this. More than 150 recipes for everyday cooking and inspired fun by Joy Howard, otherwise known as Joy the Baker. I'm sure you know who that is. Uh, let's take a look at this fun, colorful cookbook. Uh, woo! It starts off with Wendy's. Oh, Woody's Chili. Okay. Wow. Wow, look at this table of contents. Breakfast and brunch, sips and snacks, salads, lunch and light fare, playful dinners, inspired feasts. That's what I want to turn to first. Everything for the holidays, easy treats, birthdays, and sweet occasions. Okay, I'm going to flip through really quick. Looking for some Disney character. Oh, your pancakes. That's so cute. And, okay, we could all do this. We don't need a cookbook to show us how to do that. Okay, that's kind of silly. But... Let's move on to the harder stuff. Popcorn, no. This is not really a children's cookbook, but it's written simply, so it could be. Honeybee minis, that's cute. Okay. I need the really, really good stuff. Okay. A Bambi bento. Very clever. Love it. Don't really need a recipe. I can look at the picture. Crystal Palace pasta salad. Where's the Disney characters? I know I saw an Olaf when I flipped through here. What is that? Okay, that is an interesting magic carpet flatbread. Very clever. That is a punk rock pink animal pasta. <laughs> okay. I still, I know there's an Olaf in here somewhere. I don't see him. Oh, well, I'll just flip through really quick so you can see the cute kind of stuff that's in here. La, la, la. Okay. Nice, fun. Definitely worth getting from the library, if not buying it. If you're a huge Disney fan, you have to. I think we have just two cookbooks left. Or three. Oh, two. Meza. Small plates to share. Dips, salads, pastries, and sweets by Gailey Basson. It's a couple years old. This is my personal copy. It doesn't belong to the library. I love Persian cooking and Mediterranean. I love meza, little tastes, little plates of it. 
cute, cute little book I wanted you to see. And I'll do, I think I just did a reel of it, but I'll do a, a proper cookbook look through. It's a gorgeous cookbook with like wallpaper, old carpet patterns, basic recipes. I need basic. Look, they even dyed the corner of the book green or, or teal, my favorite color. Teresa, clarified butter, ghee, la la la, cold meza. This is more summer food to me, like dips and little veggies and things you can just, finger foods, definitely more summer than winter. Pomegranate salad with basil. I learned in my Persian or Iranian, Iranian cooking class how many herbs they use. They use herbs for everything. I had no idea. Like most of your meal prep is just chopping herbs. Courgette feta and herb patties. Remind me what a courgette is in American. What is it? Um, feta, scallion, dill, mint. I don't know. Sounds good. Baked shellfish and coriander pasty. Hmm. That is Meza, which you can find in the Cookbook Diva store. And finally, this just came out yesterday, two days ago, by I think a Seattle off author, Easy Beans. This is a great cookbook for those of us that panicked back in March and started hoarding. I was not hoarding toilet paper. I had plenty, but I started hoarding beans. And now I don't know what to do with them. I have the loose dry beans and I have the canned beans. So Jackie Freeman is teaching us in this tiny little cookbook from Sasquatch, simple, satisfying recipes that are good for you, your wallet, and the planet. What can we do with all these beans? Breakfast. And a PB&J smoothie. No, thank you. Lentil and oat granola with coconut and almonds. Yum. Ooh, I don't know what's in that cup. Huevos Rancheros sandwiches. Oh, that sounds amazing. Snacks and spreads. The only hummus you'll ever need. I'm sure we all throw something different in our hummus to make it special, right? Some falafel marinated black eyed peas and olives. That sounds easy to make. A nice little dip. Spicy black bean snack mix. Let's keep going. Oh, I see beans with noodles. Good point. Split pea soup with bacon, lemon, and fresh herbs. Or omit the bacon if you're vegetarian like me. I see a cassoulet, I think. Dried cherry pilaf. I'm not sure how that incorporates beans. <gasps> Cauliflower and lima bean gratin, gratin, excuse me. Edamame slaw. That sounds fun. Warm potato, apple, and lentil salad. So here's all the stuff you can do with your beans. And that is the final cookbook of this giant pile that I'm going to give you a sneak preview of today. Thank you for watching. Let's all thank Katie for running the show for me and putting all the banners up on screen so you know what the heck I was talking about. I'm going to try and do this every Friday, and I'd love to have some guests on camera. If you've written a small cookbook, you don't have to be famous. Famous people wouldn't want to be in the show anyway, so just volunteer, DM me. Let's do a show together, and I'll see you on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Pinterest at Cookbook Divas. Thanks for watching. Happy Friday, and have a great weekend, and let's get in the kitchens and cook and read some cookbooks. <laughs> Bye.